This is a Brocade Campus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. This time around we're going to look at static link aggregation, in particular on the ICX platform. So uh, there's a few different types of link aggregation. Um, so when we create a lag here, we need to give it a name. So a descriptive name is always good. 272.50-2. So the next time you look at this configuration, you'll know what you were trying to achieve if you if you put in the destination as the name. But that's completely up to you. You can call it blue or red or one or whatever you want to call it. Um, and then you have a few different options. You have a dynamic link aggregation, which uh, is covered in another video in the series. Uh, you have a keep alive link aggregation group, which is uh, used in exchange for UDLD in a multi-vendor environment, uh, which is a, a one port lag for all intents and purposes. And lastly, we have a static. So statics really should only be used in the event that uh, dynamic is not available because the remote end does not support LACP or 802.3 AD. That is very, very rare, but there is still some legacy gear out there that does not support dynamic lag. So in some cases you are stuck with uh, statics. Um, so the downside of statics, of course, is there's no health checking mechanism. It doesn't use LACP. And so if the other end is not configured or misconfigured or miscabled, you can cause a loop through the network because static doesn't care uh, what the other end wants to do. So as soon as you deploy this static lag, it's going to come up and it's going to start sending packets down all of the available links. Whether the other end is misconfigured or not configured, it doesn't care. So because spanning tree treats this entire lag as a single entity, spanning tree will also not catch a loop because it's not going to listen for packets coming back on its own port members of the same lag. So anyway, we're going to call this static. Um, and uh, so we, we need to add the ports, we need to add a primary port, and we need to deploy it just like a dynamic. So there are other options here that you can set if you wish, keys and things, but um, for the most part, we're just going to add the ports. So in this case, we're going to say ports, ethernet, one slash two slash one, and ethernet one slash two slash three. I could also do a range there. I could say one slash two slash one, two, one slash two slash three, but we, we're just using those two, which is our 10 gig ports between the two switches. We need to assign a primary port here. Uh, and there's no ethernet here. It's just primary and whatever you want to make that primary. So it doesn't really matter. It's up to you. One slash two slash three will make our primary in this case. And lastly, we're going to deploy it. So in a real production environment, you don't want to deploy it and then go and configure the other end and take your time. You want to have both sides configured and do the deploy, you know, relatively at the same time. So anyway, so I deploy and it says it's, it's now successfully deployed. So if I do a show lag here, I can see my lag. So this is my lag 272.50-2. Uh, it's static and it's deployed. Here's my ports, here's the port count, here's my primary port, it's hash based. Um, and so the ports are up and forwarding, right? Full 10 gig, um, it's not VLAN tagged, it's on VLAN one and it's untagged, uh, but it doesn't care. The fact that the other end is not yet been configured is irrelevant to this device. It just brings it up and as long as, as, long as that port is up physically, then it'll start load balancing your sessions down both of those links. Uh, if we look at a show interface, show interface E one slash two slash one. So we see that port is up and up. Um, and then we can also see it's a member of an active link. Uh, one, two, one, one, two, three with a primary one, two, three. And then it's uh, part of the configured link, right? Um, so again, if I want to shut down um, ports, I would do that from the lag. If I want to shut down the whole lag, then I can go into the primary port. Uh, so interface E one slash two slash three. If I do a disable here, then it's going to shut down the whole lag. So if I do a show lag, um, the whole lag goes into a disable state. But if I want to shut down individual ports, I would do that from the lag. So let me enable that. Go in, go back into the, uh, into the lag. So lag to 7250-2 uh, and then I can do a disable um, ethernet one slash two slash one for example and it will just disable that so show lag 
shows me that 121 is disabled and 123. So if I want to disable or enable individual ports within the lag, then I would do that um, in the lag. But if I wanted to shut down the whole lag for whatever reason, I would do that in the physical interface of the primary port, which is going to shut down um, all the ports in the lag, regardless of how many ports there are. Okay, so uh, the other end configuration is identical, so there's no reason to show you that, but that is the basics. And again, this should really, as a best practice, only be used in the event that dynamic lags are not available to you. Okay, that's it. Thanks for joining.